Welcome everybody. Today uh, another movie about a game I played uh, as Germany. The game was called 24 Hour Cycle Time Game and I played it on Web Diplomacy. Quite a chaotic game but um, it ended in a very strong triple alliance between myself playing as Germany, Austria and Italy. But let's start from the beginning, pre-game. Um, as I always do, I started messaging my, uh, my main neighbors, England, France, Russia and also Austria and Italy quickly found out Austria was willing to uh, to cooperate as is quite normal with Germany so we decided to keep a tight line also quickly understood from Italy he was not going against Austria and was, was planning to move against France which he decided to do in spring 91 with a move to Piemont um, and for the rest it was quite chaotic so for Russia, I, I talked to Russia, I was kind of vague what was coming out, he was not aggressive, didn't really mention what he was going to do. I had the impression England was not moving against France, mm, so I, I was quite uncertain what to do to be honest, and I decided, well, if I'm uncertain, let's just go for aggressive growth. So as you can see, in spring 91, I decided to move my fleet to Holland, army to Ruhr, um, France respected the DMZ we agreed, which I didn't really expect so I was fully more than willing to move Ruhr back to Munich in the fall in case it was necessary. Italy lives up to his word, um, leaves Venice empty so a strong sign of trust towards Austria. Um, Russia surprisingly decides to hold his army in Warsaw, also didn't really see that coming. Um, I obviously lose any let's say leverage I have over Russia with moving my fleet to Holland. But all in all okay I guess. Um, so I decided to execute my strategy in the fall and just grab those three builds. Which as you can see I do. I grab Denmark and I grab with a supported move uh, Belgium. France obviously also has some interests in Belgium. And Italy, nasty as he is, um, decides to hold in Piemont. France moves back into Marseille, meaning France ends with zero builds. Which, well done Italy. So. Um, this kind of drives my relationship with Italy a little bit as well. France is a little bit annoyed I don't leave him into Belgium, although reasonably he couldn't have expected that. A very good news, England is very focused north, moving into Barentsea and an army into Norway, which is obviously an aggressive move against, uh, against Russia. In the south, what we see is that Turkey actually grabs uh, Romania. I'm not so happy about that because that means Turkey really has two builds in 191. Uh, you can see Russia moving into Galicia in the fall, so I have some worries about my Austrian brother in the south. Um, how does it look in terms of builds? Russia gets one build, but he loses, he doesn't get Romania, so that's army in St. Petersburg, obviously to defend against England. I decided to build two fleets because I know if I want to make this thing work uh, with Austria and Italy I probably need to attack England sooner rather than later and France is obviously not a threat to me because <laughs> you know, you know, he has zero builds so what do I care. Uh, other than that Turkey seems to go aggressive against uh, Russia with another fleet built in Ankara and an army in Smyrna. So in spring 192 I prepare my move against England. Um, and in the following way I do that. I move to Baltic and I move to Hel Heligoland Bight. Um, I also see in the diplomatic channels that there's there's more and more communication between myself and Austria and myself and Italy. So this three-way central power line starts to starts to get shape in 192. Obviously I'm very happy with the pressure that Italy puts on France. As you can see he moves all his, all his fleets and armies west so I'm extremely delighted with that. Um, I basically don't move my armies, but I'm really focused on the on the northern waters right now. Baltic Sea, Heligoland Bight, um, and in fall 192, I immediately decide to take Norway, which works because Russia attacks um, attacks England in Norway. England sort of sees it coming and retreats in Barents Sea at this point. Um, in the south, it's quite a big mess between Turkey, Russia, Austria somehow involved. Austria actually asked me for permission to move Galicia to Silesia so he can grab Warsaw. Which at this point I'm a little concerned that Austria is running some kind of alliance with Turkey. And as I like this central alliance better I start talking to him well. Ask Italy to send a fleet to Eastern Mediterranean or Aegean so he can help you against Turkey when the time is there. France gets a build finally. 
but is still no threat to me. And with me on North Sea, I'm, I'm not so good friends with England anymore. I don't get any builds in this year, which is unfortunate. Um, so I remain at 6. Turkey grabs 1, Italy grabs 1. Russia loses 2, so it's, it's pretty much no threat to anybody anymore. But you can see this Turkish Empire developing, and it has me concerned that, that Austria will not be able to fight that. Italy gains a build in Marseille and decides to build a fleet in, uh, in Naples, which I hope he will be sending south, so I urge him to do that. Um, so as you can see, he decides to move his fleet to Ionian and later indeed further east. I try a convoy from Belgium to Yorkshire, support holding my fleet, because England can attack it from quite a few corners. But this convoy fails, because London also moves to Yorkshire, so a little bit disappointed with that, didn't expect that to happen. Italy is making a good attack on France, actually grabbing Spain, and Austria is grabbing Warsaw, which is good news. Turkey does some kind of great circle of, I don't know, circulating units around, which is fine for me. Mm, by this time, I'm diplomatically, via communication, convinced that Austria sees Turkey as a threat. So all they need to do, Italy and Austria, is wait for the right moment to engage. In the fall, I decide uh, not to go for another convoy, which thank god I didn't, because that wouldn't have worked anyway. I grab English Channel and North Sea again. Mm, defend Denmark. Russia kicks out uh, England out of St. Petersburg, so quite a good move. And if you look in the fall or in the winter, what is happening? I'm still at 6, just like after 91. Austria and Italy now also both have 6. Turkey has 6 supply centers. England still has 5, but is not in such a great shape because I'm both in the North Sea and English Channel so our Central Power Alliance is gaining momentum and at this time we also speak out loud to each other both me and Austria, me and Italy and also Italy and Austria that we're in this together his fleet has arrived, Italian fleet has arrived in Aegean Sea so I'm happy with that and even these army builds in Trieste and Venice at this point don't concern me so in the spring 94 I decide to take London and I also move into Burgundy and walk into Brest via Picardy because yeah, France is uh, ready to be chewed up and I want my fair part of it. Italy very happy that I'm moving against France obviously. And Austria is making his move against, uh, against Turkey now, which I'm happy about. Um, in the fall he continues that, so Russia actually takes back Sevastopol. And Austria is going to take Romania and Bulgaria. I take London. And I grab both Brest and also Paris via the support from Brest. So, um, in the retreats you see France is already dead. Turkey is losing a lot of supply centers. Uh, and both Austria and myself are gaining a lot. And also Italy has gained something, Portugal. So, yeah, I suddenly gained three supply centers. So I went from three to six, then a few years nothing, and then from six to nine. Austria grabs two and Italy grabs one. So the Central Power Alliance is dominating now with the well over half the supply set is already conquered. I decide to build another two fleets because England is my main problem here and England has one, two, three, four fleets so I decide I need a, a number that trumps that so I build two more which gets me at five fleets. I think that's the way to beat uh, England here. My other build is an army which I kind of need for stability reasons. Austria decides to build a fleet which surprises me a little bit. Also Italy builds a fleet I hope everything is going well between those two. I have some doubts in this winter. Um, in spring 95, I tried to capture the North Sea, but I failed because actually England is capturing it. Also bound with England and Sweden, but I have my supporting units coming into Heligoland Bight and also into Baltic Sea, so I'm confident that I'll push back, back England in a while. Italy is coming to, to help me a little bit by moving into North Atlantic Ocean, putting pressure on Liverpool. Um, in the fall, I decide to support hold Denmark and defend Holland and Belgium because England has made it to the North Sea. At the same time, England is defending Liverpool, Italy moving into Clyde, so we have the Englishman where we want him to be pushed in a corner. In the south, everything goes well against Turkey. Um, Austria is not grabbing Constantinople yet, but with fleets in Syria and also in the Eastern Mediterranean, that's a matter of time. At the same time, Austria does manage to uh, to grab Sevastopol. Mm, and as you can see, uh, yeah, we gain even more supply centers. So Austria gains one in our alliance. Me and Austria both at nine, Italy at seven. And yeah, although England still has five, England is in a very tough spot. I well, you see in a minute that I grab 
Norway and Sweden in matters of, of years, so yeah, that's fine. First I push England out of Skagerrak, which he needs to break down because he has no way of getting it anywhere else. My army is moving from Wales to, to Yorkshire and yeah, basically putting pressure on England all around. At the same time Austria wants another piece, so he's moving to Livonia to grab Moscow soon. And the offensive Turkey against Turkey is not working yet, but it will work very, very, very soon. Mm. In the fall, I take another three supply centers, both Edinburgh, Norway, and Sweden. So this is another very good year for me with plus three. I also move to Burgundy just to make sure Italy doesn't try anything stupid in our alliance. Italy is a little bit pissed about that. He communicates that to me, but everything is okay. You can see Italy doesn't have much many places to go, he grabs Liverpool, but other than that, yeah, he doesn't really get m many gains. Um, Smyrna sort of the end station here, and Liverpool is here. As you can see in Winter 196, if the alliance holds, this this game is kind of played, because, yeah, um, only Turkey and England have one supply center, England loses four in a single year, which is quite impressive, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all dead weight. Um, and actually, in 1907, we conquer both St. Petersburg and Ankara, and that's the end of the game. I have to admit, looking back at this game, the communication and lines went flawless, but I think especially Italy kind of yeah, ended up with a, bit of less, with a little bit less than he deserved. So this game does not have a standard scoring where we draw all the points <coughs> as an alliance, but it's uh, some score per square scoring. So the more supply centers you have, <coughs> the more points you gain. And actually, if you as you can see that me and Austria, we gain 39 and 46 uh, points, because it, but because it works squared, Italy only gets 22 points, which is not that much. So if I would have been the Italian player, I would have not have been too happy with that, and I would have demanded to have at least 11 supply centers, so they're 34 in total, so 11 each would have been more fair, I guess. Me playing Germany, I considered taking one from Austria, but for me it was like okay it's it's not necessary and I have a, have a decent amount of points but um, yeah this uh, this sums of square scoring that you have on web diplomacy it's it's a nice let's say twist to the normal uh, way I guess it would have been fair if we would have all gotten an equal amount of points because we all had our let's say our fair share in this alliance that was it if you enjoyed this game uh, please subscribe to the channel there's more to come.